Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the final lesson in our unit on immigration. Um, and this is going to be one that I'm going to try and be as fair as possible in discussing because uh, there are going to be a lot of emotional topics discussed here. Um, our, our essential question today has to do with why there is pushback against immigration. Why is there resistance in countries that have pull factors to welcoming immigrants into their countries? And of course, one of those countries is the United States. So um, that is going to be our discussion for today. And uh, as soon as you get the essential question written down, I'm going to go ahead and move forward and switch the slide. So our question is, why is there resistance to immigration? Um, and the first thing you need to understand is that this is not new. Um, there has always been throughout history, not just in America, but around the world in countries that have had pull factors, there has always been pushback against new waves of immigrants. Whatever the newest group of people is coming to a country, they are usually pushed back upon the most because they are the most different. People don't know anybody that's like them. They speak different languages. They may have a different religion. Um, they may be of a different ethnic background. And whenever there is an unfamiliarity with a new wave of immigrants, um, that particular group of immigrants tends to be targeted. And it doesn't matter whether we're talking Europe, the United States, Canada, or any place else in the world that has pull factors. This, this is a very common theme. So I want to introduce some terms to you here, and these are some terms that are going to be on our test. Uh, the first is xenophobia. It's pronounced xenophobia. Uh, xenophobia is a fear of those who are different from you, and whether that's someone's ethnicity, their religion, the language they speak, the music they listen to. If you fear somebody because they're different from you, um, that is called xenophobia. Another term that's important to understand is called scapegoating. Scapegoating is the practice of singling out a person or a group for the person or purpose of blame. So if someone is more interested in finding somebody to blame than finding what the cause of a problem is, um, we like to say that they are scapegoating somebody. Um, and obviously that has a negative connotation to it. Um, connotation meaning there's a negative vibe to that word. And the final word I want you to understand is demagogue. A demagogue is a political leader who seeks support by appealing to people's emotions rather than facts and rational argument. Um, that's a great way to win elections when you appeal to people's emotions. If you can get them going, get them to vote for you. It's a great way to win. Um, the question is, is that a great way to lead? Uh, and I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not answering that question for you, but I am definitely intending to get you to think about that for yourself. So let's go ahead and continue this conversation. Same question, you don't have to write a new question. Um, every country, and this is very important to understand, every country has a right to decide who can and cannot be there and what its needs are. Um, if we start from the position that every country must accept anybody who wants to live there, no matter what, that's not really reasonable. Every country has a right to decide how many immigrants it can absorb or can't absorb and to have laws around that. And the question is more, what are those laws based on? Are those laws based on, you know, we only want to allow in people that have certain skills that our economy needs? That could be a reasonable argument. Is it based on, you know, we don't like people from a certain religious background? Um, that's been an issue in the news in recent years, and, and you know, that is an issue of argument. Um, is it even more blatant? You know, we only want to invite people into the country who are from certain ethnic backgrounds. 
Um, the United States has a rough history with race. We literally had a law on the books called the Chinese Exclusion Act. Um, we have different laws on the books for people coming into the country from Cuba versus people coming into the country from Haiti. They are both Caribbean islands. They are both poor. Um, Haitians are uh, mostly African descent and speak a version of French. Uh, Cubans are Latinos who speak Spanish. Um, but the main reason we allow Cubans in is Cuba has a communist government and we don't like communism, so we let Cubans into the country very easily. Um, you know, that's just one example. But, but when, as we have this conversation, it's important to understand every country does have a right to decide who can and cannot be there. I think the issue we would want to discuss is what is fair and what is reasonable in terms of what those laws should be like. And this is whether we're talking about the United States, Mexico, Europe, any country has a right to have laws around this. So demagogues um, do get elected sometimes, and not just in the United States, but in other countries. And a lot of times they get elected by stoking people's emotions around immigration. I'm just going to put this out there. Obviously, President Trump uh, made a large issue out of building the wall along the Mexican border, and that appealed to the emotions of people who want to control immigration into the country from Mexico and Latin America. Um, he did not use a lot of fact-based arguments. In fact, he often said that it was out of control um, when basically during the 2016 election, immigration from Mexico was lower than it had been since, I believe, 1973. So... I would say that he was appealing to xenophobia and he was trying to scapegoat immigrants and it worked for him. He did get elected president and that's completely separate from the issue of do we need immigration reform in the country? Do we need to have a system that is more reasonable where we are allowing legal immigration and we are properly controlling uh, immigration that is not legal with undocumented workers. Um, how do you devise a reasonable system? Um, you know, President Obama was elected by appealing to the opposite group. Uh, President Obama was elected by appealing to those who believed uh, that immigration was a positive thing and that we should be um, accepting of immigrants up to a point. No country can accept everybody. And that's the challenge. Um, but President Trump is not the only example of this. There is a party in Germany, uh, which has a very difficult history, that has a very large group in parliament now that's been elected that is very anti-immigrant. And Adolf Hitler, historically, um, you know, came to power in Germany by scapegoating, scapegoating Jews and people who were different from what he called you know, pure Germans, the, the Aryan race. So you know, racism uh, is definitely an element in the pushback against immigration. Uh, there's a party in Sweden um, that's become a lot stronger because of resistance to immigration. So on that map, we saw on the last slideshow in lesson three, it showed the countries in Europe that have the most immigrants, and it's those countries which actually have political parties which are getting stronger because the, the people who live in those countries for a long time are starting to resist the idea of immigration. So it's not just in the United States. Um, even in Canada, which is very welcoming towards immigrants, there is definitely pushback from the, the conservative side of the political spectrum in Canada uh, towards immigration. So it's not just a Donald Trump United States issue. Uh, this is a worldwide issue, um, and it's very intense right now. It's very intense right now. So countries have a choice to make, whether to be welcoming and kind towards immigrants or punishing towards them. Um, Politics plays a big role. The issues in the news recently where 
that children are getting separated from their parents at the border as they enter the country is a form of cruelty that is designed specifically to prevent people from trying to come into the country in the first place. Basically sending the message, if you try to come in, it's not going to be good for you or your family, so just don't try. Um, the question is, is that the kind of country we want to be? Um, historically, that is not the kind of country that we are. Um, even if you cannot accept everybody who wants to immigrate to the country, you can treat them fairly, give them what we call due process, um, not treat them like prisoners or criminals, and decide through the legal system who can and cannot be here. It, but you don't have to dehumanize them and punish them. And yes, to some degree, I'm expressing an opinion here. I think that these are the issues. How do you treat immigrants? How do you come up with laws that are reasonable? How do you look at what your country's needs are? And, and you know, every leader of every country has to look out for what the needs of its country are. That, that's just, that's how government works. But how you go about that is the key question. So across the world, you will see in your lifetimes the resistance in countries that have pull factors to the increasing waves of immigrants. Uh, it is an issue in Germany, it's an issue in Sweden, it's an issue in Austria, it's an issue in Hungary, it's an issue in Britain, it's the reason they're leaving the European Union, it's an issue in the United States, it's also an issue in Mexico. Mexico has an issue with people crossing its southern border. The government of Mexico is working with the United States to prevent that from happening. That doesn't get talked about a lot in the news. Um, so. It's important for you to understand all of these dynamics, why people leave their countries, why people come to different countries, why there's resistance in the pull factor countries to new waves of immigrants coming in. And if you can think about it in that context and not just in a, you know, a personal context, as I realize for a lot of you, this is personal. It affects you personally. It affects your family personally. It affects people you know personally. So it's very difficult to look at you know, the wider world and see it differently because you know you care about the people you care about and that's the nature of being human so ladies and gentlemen this will end our unit on immigration uh, there will be a test coming up i do want you to write a summary on these notes um, and we will be reviewing and hopefully after all of this you have a greater understanding of the issue of immigration, not just in America, but around the world. And if that is the case, I have done my job. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is time to write that summary, and it is also time for Mr. B to sign off once more on the Waldo Middle School Social Studies YouTube Network.